The techniques presented in this video are only a suggestion. They are not the only way to make something in Nuke. Composting as a node-based software is very flexible, so there are always several ways to make the same result. If you don't like my techniques and think they are incorrect, well, they're not. They're just another way of doing the same thing. Thank you for watching. Welcome to another edition of You Just Have To Be Better. This time, we're gonna have to just be better at making volume rays in Nuke. Time starts now. So today, I wanna show you like a little bit of a trick that I've learned over the years in production. Whenever you're dealing with volume rays, they always have a bit of a fake look to them. So here's a couple of ways of you fixing that by multiplying those volume rays and animating those volume rays against a certain element of smoke or you can also create it using um, some noise patterns. So you start by using a radial node. That radial node will be basically or your point of start of the volume ray. Using reformat, which you can link to your formatting of your scene or not, you can literally do the radial um, to make the source of light of that volume ray. Once you're happy with the size of it, I would probably advise you to make a square. Maybe 512 by 512 will be enough. You then have to put a transform node. That transform node will help you to move around this source of light. Then, using a merge node against your background, in this case I'm just using a constant, you then use, as you see, the transform node to make the source of light smaller or bigger. And then, lo and behold, you put the volume ray. Now, the volume ray will, of course, have to be pointing into the source. So as you can see, I'm using the radial as my source of spotlight and then, of course, the volume ray with the second volume position as my source of the actual direction of the light. So if you animate, you get something similar to this. You can make it smaller, you can change it, of course, and the cool thing with this by using a radial is that it will allow you to put the radial outside the bounding boxes of the volume ray. And then, of course, you can fiddle around with the flickering and the gain and the gamma of the volume ray to make it work less or more. But this is the cool thing, is that because I have a radial node and a transform node, I can actually put it outside uh, the bounding box, which means I can, have, I can have a spotlight coming from the outside screen. Here's a little animation for you to see how it works. Now, Using an element, any element will do, like if you have a smoke element or if you have an atmospheric element that you shot on a studio, you can then use this to multiply against your volume because usually volume rays look very CG. They look very much like a 2D effect. So by basically putting it against the volume ray and using a multiplication, then of course you need to put a grade note so that you can multiply up and gain up the actual detail of the volume. And as you can see, by using a couple of transforms and some grade nodes, you can actually make the volume look much more realistic. And because it's multiplied, it really will give it a sense of realism. Now, I have a couple of versions uh, here. Of course, I also use a transform node and a crop with softness to actually deal with the issues of the bounding boxes of the actual element that you're using. But this will, of course, be completely different depending on which element you're using. So in this situation, as you can see here, I have a very subtle spotlight that could be used on the stage show. Now, here's another way of doing it, using a radial node with blurring, with softness. The same thing kind of works, but then if you leave flickering with the softness, you get an even nicer volume ray. You kind of have the lines of the volume ray passing by, which can give even more realism. And then if you cut it against the same exact uh, element then you get almost like a feeling that there is a fan on the volume, which could be quite cool to do fan effects. Now, if you don't have access to uh, footage elements, and if you really are in a hurry, you could always uh, use a noise pattern. So this is the last example of a more broad smoke pattern, as you can see there. But if you really don't have access to anything and you're on a rush, you can always use a noise pattern. Of course, the result is not as good, but the noise uh, node, as long as you animate the noise node, in this case, I'm animating the Z in the position of it, you can still get similar results. I would really recommend you to use a 2D element of smoke, which are quite easy to find on the internet. And time is up. So next week, yet another, you just have to be better at something. Please subscribe, like, share, and leave me a comment. If you did not like this video, well, you can just leave. You know, there's just, just leave. Thank you so much for watching.